According to the New York Times headline, U.S. officials expect bird flu to return in the fall. It goes on to say U.S. agriculture officials say it is highly probable that the violent avian flu viruses that have hit U.S. poultry operations hard in recent weeks will return next fall when bird populations migrate south, potentially spreading the viruses into new regions of the country. Official with the Agriculture Department's Animal, Plant, and Health Inspection Service said the H5N2 virus, along with two other highly pathogenetic strains of bird flu, would probably be passed among birds at breeding grounds in the northern United States and Canada through the summer. The strains are difficult to control, say scientists, in part because wild birds can carry the viruses without appearing to be sick. The statement marks a shift in tone in the agency's assessment of the likelihood of a renewed outbreak tied to fall migration. More than 15 million commercial birds nationwide have died or are expected to be killed in the current outbreak, and exports of U.S. poultry and eggs have slowed sharply. The key concern has been whether the viruses will become epidemic in the nation's wild bird population, eventually spreading them to the East Coast and down into the heart of the nation's chicken broiler production states in the South and Southeast. With that on the backdrop, I think it's important for us to let Dr. Scott Johnson speak to us. He made a DVD with the Prophecy Club we're offering today. We call it Avian Flu Killer of Millions. Now, for the last 13 years, Dr. Scott has been a medical misinformation investigator and has been writing a health newsletter for five years. He specializes in clinical nutrition and patient education. For 12 years, Scott has been researching the plans of the New World Order to depopulate the planet. In other words, they're not just trying to kill birds, they're after you too. Not having this startling information could cost you your life. Learn the evil plans about the avian flu and how to survive it. Dr. Johnson explains the deadly traits of this virus, its origins, and the fact that it is probably man-made, man-released, and man-manipulated to be transmissible by air, human to human. Did you hear that? Yes, it is deadly, but the laws surrounding it may kill more than the virus. He explains that laws are already on the books to force you to receive a method of of their choice to track who has been vaccinated and the microchip that is at the top of their preferred list. You could be forced to leave your home, city, job, all possessions, and move to a place of their choosing, such as a barbed wire concentration camp. The virus is bad, but what could be done in the name of the law to get rid of the virus may be worse. Now, in this DVD that we're offering, the topics are Proof the Illuminati telegraphs their punches prior to cataclysmic events. While avian flu is the perfect vehicle for world depopulation, what the globalist elite are planning for Americans. Why the avian flu could be a repeat of the Spanish flu of 1918 that killed millions. Vaccinations, injectable microchips, and the avian flu. And finally, Project BioShield. Kill rates, food shortages, forced vaccinations and evacuations, and quarantines leading to concentration camps. Now let's go listen to the audio of the DVD. And you can get this DVD, normally valued at $30, available today for a gift of just $20, and we're going to offer you free shipping too. It's called Avian Flu, Killer of Millions. You get it by calling 785-266-1112. I know you've already got that in your cell phone, 785-266-1112. Avian flu, killer of millions. Now let's go listen to Dr. Scott Johnson. The 1918 Spanish flu started in American military camp Funston, Fort Riley, amongst World War I troops who, re who received the vaccinations administered by the military. That flu strain only appeared briefly once again according to the U.S. Atlanta CDC. This was in 1976 and again it struck at the U.S. Army camp, Fort Dix, amongst recently vaccinated troops and no one else ever. So Fort Dix has also been known to be a vaccine trial center. This is an article by John Christian Ryder of this year, Bird Flu or Weapons Grade Flu. Little excerpt here reads, the CDC comparing the original H1N1 avian genome. Now this is where it all started. H1N1 is the original avian flu strain of, of which all the other mutations have spawned. Okay, when they compared the H1N1 with the mutated H3N3 
Spanish flu of 1918 strain, and then also compared that with H5N1 strain, the CDC believes that the H5N1 will mutate into an airborne transmissible human-to-human -human virus as the H3N2 strain did of 1918. Why does the CDC believe this? Because the U.S. military created the first military strain of influenza, H1N1 was morphed into H3N2. Now this is of the Spanish flu of 1918. Spanish flu was created at Fort Riley, Kansas in April of 1918 from the naturally occurring avian virus strain H1N1. There's your link to go. That's a very in-depth article if you want to know more about that subject. This is from Eleanor McBean. She's a PhD. She has a book, Swine Flu Exposé, and this is of chapter two. The flu 1918 and now. I'm going to quote from this. I was an on-the-spot observer of the 1918 influenza epidemic. All the doctors and people who were living at the time of the 1918 Spanish influenza epidemic say it was the most terrible disease the world had ever had. Strong men Hale and Hardy would be dead the next. The disease had the characteristics of the Black Death, added to typhoid, diphtheria, pneumonia, smallpox, paralysis, and all the diseases the people had been vaccinated with immediately following World War I. Practically the entire population had been injected or, quote, seeded with a dozen or more diseases or toxic serums. When all those doctor-made diseases started breaking out all at once, it was tragic. And again, she was an on-the-spot observer of this. That pandemic dragged on for two years kept alive with the addition of more poison drugs administered by the doctors who tried to suppress the symptoms. As far as I could find out, now this is the PhD, Eleanor McBean, the flu hit only the vaccinated. Those who refused the shots escaped the flu. My family had refused all the vaccinations, so we remained well all the time." End of quote. There's the full transcript if you want to read that further, and her book's even for sale. You can still get it. A nation that is ignorant of its past is a nation that is ripe for deception and manipulation. Another picture of the Spanish flu of 1918. This is from the Irish Examiner, vaccine, not virus, responsible for the Spanish flu. Quote, the army doctors knew all these cases of disease and death were due to vaccination and were honest enough to admit it in their medical reports. It sounded like back then it was almost a foregone conclusion, not even a point of debate. When army doctors tried to suppress the symptoms of typhoid with the stronger vaccine, it caused a worse form of typhoid, paratyphoid. But when they concocted an even stronger vaccine to suppress that one, they created an even worse disease, Spanish flu. After the war, this was the one of the vaccines used to protect the panic-stricken world from the soldiers returning from World War I battlefronts infected with the dangerous diseases." End of quote. So there we have four witnesses, and the Bible says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, a thing is established. So again, the rest is history. 50 million people died worldwide. And this may be a conservative figure. It might have been a lot more when you have mass graves like they were digging in order to get all of the infected bodies underground. It's hard to get an accurate body count. But the evidence strongly suggests that the Spanish flu of 19 was actually created and then spread through vaccinations. But again, the panic stricken um, public demanded a vaccination, not realizing that was the way in which the disease was actually spreading. So you have to ask yourself, will history repeat itself? This is a ward uh, on Spanish 1918 uh, hospital ward there. This is one of uh, former speakers, Leonard Horowitz, avian flu fright, politically timed for global iatro genocide. And he's also an MD. He says in this, in this report, quote, to make the human vaccine specific for H5N1, mutant virus, you must start with the human virus, which does not yet exist. That's why, how could a vaccine work unless they've actually got the mutated virus, okay, which they say they don't have yet. But he says this does not yet exist, this mutated virus, except perhaps in military, biomedical, pharmaceutical laboratories. In fact, this is precisely what is being prepared based on news reports. Now, he's one of the most foremost experts on this whole subject. Uh, this is a copy of... Uh, I believe he has this in, uh, we have it here at the Prophecy Club, but in a uh, DVD and book format. This is from the Washington Post. U.S. uses live bird flu viruses in vaccine experiment. In an isolation ward of Baltimore Hospital, up to 30 volunteers will participate this April, so this already happened, in a bold experiment. A vaccine made with a live version of the most notorious bird flu will be sprayed into their nose. I don't think I'd be volunteering. So that's how they administer a nasal vaccine, just like that. 
This is an article that ran in Japan. Vaccine blamed in avian flu outbreak. Quote, the agricultural ministry suspects an unauthorized vaccine from Central America caused the avian flu outbreak in a Baraki prefecture. The ministry said an unauthorized bird flu vaccine originating in Central America might have been brought into, J into Japan. Instead of immunizing the birds, the vaccine infected them, the sources said. And we, we kind of touched on that a little bit with like just the autism cases. The, a lot of this happens where they actually become infected with the very thing they supposedly have been vaccinated for. Now here's a quote from Dr. James Shanahan. He was the National Institutes of Health director from 1955 to 1968, so 13 years. Here he is receiving the Distinguished Federal Civilian Service Award from President Lyndon B. Johnson in 1966. His quote is, the only safe vaccine is a vaccine that is never used. And again, this is coming from a very, very high ranking medical doctor. This is from CNN in Washington. Nearly one billion in injury claims paid out for the vaccination program. Nearly one billion has been paid to more than 1,300 people injured over the past decade in a government-backed childhood vaccination program, the Justice Department reported. The individual awards to families of children injured by the vaccinations often amount to more than a million dollars each. Well, now you know why they're trying to suppress these things. It's a lot of money they're losing, and it's a lot of bad press also. And usually the vaccination injuries are so horrific, like death and a lot of other things, that that's why the rewards, the awards are so high, because the injuries are so horrific. This, this is from Associated Press in Atlanta. It was an article entitled, CDC, Centers for Disease Control, will allow the 1918 killer flu off campus. This is a picture, if you can find a, a cemetery that predates like 19, you know, 18, in these cemeteries, typically, you will find a lot of tombstones in regard to people that died in 1918. This is a whole part of a cemetery where these are just all 1918 flu victims. Federal scientists say they will consider requests to ship the recently recreated 1918 killer flu, flu virus to select U.S. research labs. There are 300 non-government research labs registered to work with deadly germs like Spanish flu. Last month, U.S. scientists announced they had created from scratch the 1918 virus. Hmm. It was the first time an infectious agent behind a historic global epidemic had ever been reconstructed. Now, I, I heard the story on NPR how this all came about, at least this is what we were being told. A man that had went up to Alaska and they found one of these mass graves that I had mentioned. And he'd went up there before and they, they, they um, tried to get a, a tissue sample, but I guess when they tried to culture it, it didn't take. So he went back again and basically what ended up happening is, is, is he dug down and he almost got poetic where he got to this one particular lady and she, oh, she was perfectly preserved because of the permafrost and all these things. And they cut her open and they got this culture off her lung. And this is how they actually recreated um, the Spanish flu of 1918. And again, that's what we we're being told. Now, Psalm 112 verse 7 says, he shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. Proverbs, and these are evil tidings I'm presenting you. Proverbs 29, 25, the fear of man bringeth a snare. And again, this is what is happening to a lot of people. They have the fear of man on them, not the fear of God. The fear of God, though, is the beginning of wisdom. It's the beginning of understanding. The Bible says the angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him. It's, he also says in his word that sal his salvation is nigh unto them that fear him. So the fear of the Lord is a very good thing. And it's something I've actually prayed for ever since I became a Christian. Because I looked in the Bible and Proverbs and Psalms and I said, there's so many blessings connected with the fear of the Lord. But it's the one thing you see very, very little of in the church. Because there's so much sin in the camp, so much sin in the church. How could they have a whole lot of fear of the Lord? So then it says, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. So this stuff all goes hand in hand. Psalm 66 verse 18 says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So this is another reason people get their prayers hindered, because they've got all kind of sin in their life. How can God hear them? Going further, this is out of Washington. New implantable biochip could provide quick bird flu tests. Now we're going to see how the implantable microchips play into this whole scenario here. U.S. researchers introduced new implantable biochip that can test for 11 different influenza strains, including avian flu. In less than a quarter of the time, it now takes to diagnose flu in patients. They're going to be lining up for this. One developer said, quote, this, is, this new technology should 
help provide better global influenza surveillance. Well, now they'll be able to track you because you have a microchip implant in there. They want to be able to track these people. But they're going to say, well, hey, we, we can check to see if you've got avian flu and 11 other different influenza strains. What's the downside? So this is how they're going to come to us with this. And it's going to happen in a quarter of time. With avian flu, time is of the essence because it can kill you in a matter of days. So when they talk about ramping a vaccine up and it's going to take six months, <laughs> there's going to be millions upon millions dead before that would ever happen. This is an article that says injectable microchip is 400th the size of a grain of salt. This is out of the Telegraph in the UK, originally appeared in Denver, Colorado. A microscopic computer chip so tiny that 400 could fit on a grain of salt will soon begin to revolutionize electronics. The memory device is due to be produced by the end of 2004. So this is already a done deal at this point. But it's the size of a human cell, making it the most compact chip ever. How would you ever even know if it was in a vaccine then? Or anything injectable for that matter, if you think about it. It's the size of a human cell. Dr. Ellen Bajin, a physicist at the MITRE Corporation, said that by stacking the chips on top of each other, creating what she terms as injectable nanorobots, it should be possible to store a gigabyte, which is a sizable amount of information, on the, de on the device the size of a grain of salt. The Pentagon's Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, is funding the project. And again, the government seems to be funding all of these projects. Here, we actually see an example of what they would, uh, an artist rendering of an injectable nanorobot. It's something they could actually inject into your system and it can actually perform functions and tasks in your body. So in light of the information presented, it is highly probable that injectable microchips will inevitably be used in a host of vaccines and other drugs. And again, this is preconditioning desensitizing to us to the whole mark of the beast scenario. It's also proven in fact that the US government has experimented on the American populace for decades. For the uh, definitive study on that, I would encourage you to get Dr. Stan Monti's Prophecy Club presentation where he covered that in depth. And these other two websites are also very good to check out for further verification of the experimentation of the American populace. Now, <clears throat> former CIA microbiologist Larry Harris when he was speaking on biological weapons and ways to protect our families. Now this excerpt is from Canada's Aerospace and Defense Weekly. He says, quote, in the very near future, we can almost certainly expect biological weapons to be used by various terrorist organizations. This makes it imperative that the citizens of North America obtain the necessary knowledge and skills to, pr pr to protect themselves against this emerging threat. When Larry Harris was questioned about which natural substances were effective against biological agents, his answer was, quote, the only natural substance I know of that is effective against these microbes is colloidal silver. I tested that myself when I was in the CIA and found it effective against both anthrax and the bubonic plague pathogen. He came out with many things and his reward was essentially the government coming against him and vilifying him and basically running him out of town okay for coming forth with this information now this is the link you can go to to actually see the full report it's huge I just have a small portion of it on here but it's from Canada's Defense and Aerospace Weekly now the Bible says in Proverbs 22 verse 3 a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself but the simple pass on and are punished Psalm 119 verse 11 says thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee and again this is something that's good to do in regard to scripture in regard to the times we're moving into because we don't know when our Bibles may be taken away so if you don't have any of God's word hidden in your heart then you know you need to be able to draw upon that in times of trouble Psalm 57 verse 1 says be merciful unto me O God be merciful unto me for my soul trusteth in thee yea in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. So again, we're talking about a lot of things of a cataclysmic nature here today. And ultimately, the ultimate answer is through the Lord Jesus Christ, through his protection that we would, we would obtain. So what are some proactive steps we can take to protect our families? This is a little slide of a uh, portion of the immune system. Out of all the preemptive action steps outlined by the U.S. government regarding the avian flu, not one of them says, quote, teach the populace on how to be proactive regarding an impending pandemic by supporting and building up their own immune system. This would seem reasonable instead of saying, well, let's rely on this drug or this vaccination, which does really nothing to build up your immune system. It's actually the opposite that takes place. They're not saying that. 
And again, the pharmaceutical companies are behind this. They have no financial interest in you building up your own immune system. None. If you think about that, it's actually a threat to them. Virtually all health authorities already know that a supply of any potential vaccines and Tamiflu will be wiped out in a matter of days following any bird flu outbreak. Here's another quote from Dr. Robert Webster. Like I said, again, probably the highest uh, expert in America on bird flu. He says, in the face of an epidemic, the available supplies of antiviral drugs would be used up in days because you're going to have mass panic and you're going to have a lot of people clamoring for these things. And this would really hold true, too, with the health food stores. These things are going to be off the shelf, anything having to do with the immune system. Dr. James Wilde of the Department of Emerger Emergency Medicine says, quote, even now there is little to no excess capacity to absorb more patients. But when the pandemic flu arrives, there will be a tidal wave of patients arriving in clinics and ERs nationwide. If it happens tomorrow, the system will collapse. Well, it doesn't really matter if it happens tomorrow or a month from now. The system will collapse. There's no way they're going to be able to, to contain this and, and to deal with it. And this is why they're going to have the excuse for quarantine and mass you know, immunizations and things of this nature. So the wrong thing to do would be nothing. To prepare for this as, a, as though you were preparing for a Category 5 hurricane would be the reasonable thing to do. And again, this information is coming from the prognosticator experts that are telegraphing this to us today. I've tried to stay away from fringe sources and things of this nature when I'm dealing with the subject matter because I realize you have to have concrete evidence in order to present this. And um, there's plenty of it, as you can see. So obviously it is apparent that perilous times are ahead. Now this is my disclaimer. I have to put this in here, especially being in alternative health care. It is your constitutional right to educate yourself in the arena of health and medical knowledge, to seek helpful information and to make use of it for the benefit of you and your family. You are the one responsible for your own health. This is what I try to get patients to see and realize, that they're the ones that are responsible for their own health. You can't drug your body into good health. You're the one they're responsible for this. In order to make decisions in all health matters, you must educate yourself, which is why, why we're here tonight. The information presented is not intended as prescriptive advice and should not be construed to diagnose, treat, or cure any disease or condition. The only ones that can give prescriptive advice are people in the medical profession, MDs. And if somebody's in alternative health care, they're not supposed to ever say they can treat or cure anything, according to the FDA. The supplements discussed are intended to support normal physiological and biochemical processes of the human body. The body that God gave you. God gave you an immune system. It knows, what's, it knows what to do as long as it has the right tools in order to accomplish the task that it's setting out to accomplish. But the problem is, is our bodies anymore because of the, all the things I've mentioned with the chemical exposure, what they're, what's being done to the water, the air, so many factors, the soil depletion, eating nutrient depleted food, our immune systems anymore don't have the raw materials in order to deal with these things. So my goal is to help you make physical and nutritional changes to maxi maximize your own healing potential and immune system function. With that said, let's just, I'm going to be keying on just a few different products, I'm trying to key on one or two for each area. I found that if you make this subject too complicated for patients, they typically will not do it at all. I had a man approach me early on in this and he said, well, let's come out with a website and have 20 products. And I told him, I, got, I have no interest in that. Because if you give the patient 20 products to take, they won't implement it. They'll throw up their hands and say, well, I'm not going to do any of it. So you have to make this as easy as you can for the patients. This is what I've attempted to do with this presentation. The first product I'm going to mention <clears throat> is a 5,000 part per million mild silver protein that has, <clears throat> has been stabilized and properly compounded. And that's a big deal that last statement that I made, stabilized and properly compounded. This product can be taken internally, applied topically, and also atomized via personal nebulizer like asthmatics use. For over 100 years, this particular product has medically been proven to be highly effective for viral and bacterial infections, yeast and candida also. Now, if you would like to see these medical studies, this is the link to go to, 25 pages worth, Temple University, University of Toronto, many very high-ranking medical doctors, 
that have weighed in on this subject. This product's been around since the 1890s. In fact, if you can find a pharmacist that's 90 years old, it used to be widely compounded in the doctor's offices or at the pharmacies and given to the patients to take home. The problem was, is they, at that point, they didn't have a way to stabilize the product. So what ended up happening is, they would take it and they would have to consume it very quickly. It was almost like a prescription that would kind of go bad real quickly. So it would be like just individual doses that were given. But prior to the 1938 Food and Drug Administration takeover, this was commonly given by medical doctors and pharmacies. And it was at this dosage, many times, 5,000 part per million that was given them. My testimony in regard to this was I was answering the um, medical questions for a particular colloidal silver company. I wasn't making anything, but I, was just, I just agreed to do it. I knew the owner. And I had been using a particular colloidal silver brand that they had. And for the strength, it was a good colloidal silver. But I went to a seminar like this and was speaking, and I had three people come up to me at the intermission. And I believe it was even the same intermission. One was an MD. One was a veterinarian, one was just a regular person, and they told me about this product, this mild silver protein that they'd been using, and all these miraculous results they'd, they'd gotten. The medical doctor told me about all these things in his practice that he had experienced with his patients. The veterinarian told me about all these miraculous things that had happened with animals. And then the other person gave me the same type of information. And again, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, a thing is established. So I thought to myself, Proverbs 18, verse 13 says, He that judgeth a matter before he heareth it, it is a folly and a shame unto him. And I was tempted to judge this matter before I heard it, because I had been so indoctrinated that you can't use that high part per million silver. But I said, no. I said, these people had no hidden agenda. They were not trying to sell me anything. Um, and I never saw them since then. So I tried it, and what I noticed is one of the reasons I got into alternative health care was a poorly functioning immune system. After going on this product, my immune system came up to a level it had never been before. And I was taking everything but the kitchen sink in regard to clinical nutrition, herbs, all kind of things. And it was all I could do just to not get sick, taking all of that even. So I said, well, I'm, I'm feeling really good. I'd been on it for a while. And I said, um, I'm going to interrupt the broadcast right there, but I do encourage you to call 785-266-1112. Just make a donation to help us with radio. Or if you'd like to have avian flu killer of millions, that is available today for a gift of $20. And you get free shipping if you call today. 785-266-1112. That particular offer is not available on the internet. You gotta call 785-266-1112. Avian flu killer of millions. Normally 30. Today available for a gift of just $20 and you get free shipping. 785-266-1112. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your prayers and thank you for your regular monthly support. God bless. Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. Yes, you can still get the two DVDs by Michael Snyder, Prepare for the Economic Collapse, World War III, and the Regathering of the Ten Lost Tribes of Israel for a gift of $50. However, the best deal is get the April gift offer, which includes the last four speakers having six DVDs, a value of $180 for a gift of just $90. In addition to Michael Snyder's two DVDs, you get Standing for the Lord, which tells the amazing story of how God got Christine Wyke past two key entry doors and two checkpoints to proclaim Jesus is Lord during Muslims worshiping Allah in a Christian church. Then in Prophecies and the Bible Codes, Jonathan Wright is the only Christian that is researching Bible prophecy in the Bible Codes. He's found amazing information presented in over 100 charts in this triple DVD set. So that would be six DVDs over the last four speakers at the Prophecy Club in the April gift offer, valued at $180 for a gift of just $90. Call 785-266-1112 and ask for the April gift offer or go to prophecyclub.com. That's the April gift offer, four speakers, six DVDs, valued at $180 for a gift of just $90. 785-266-1112 or prophecyclub.com. Order today.